Hello everybody, welcome to chapter 7 of My Teacher Fried My Brains, oh my. Also guys, make sure you're subscribed because only like, uh, 87% of you are subscribed, I believe, yep. I mean, 87 are not subscribed. That leaves only 13 who are. Oh my days, just subscribe, okay? Okay. Chapter 7 is called Andromeda Jones. Let's just start because I think I want to come out with a few of these today. Also, guys, shout out to Bruce Cavill. Genius. Book 3. I don't even know how he imagined that. How do you come up with this stuff? Bruce. Sponsor me. <laughs> Anyways, Chapter 7, Andromeda Jones. Even though I went to school every day, I didn't see the inside of the classroom until the middle of the next week. That was because I had to sit in the man catcher's office for the next five days. The teacher sent down work for me, but I didn't understand it, so I don't know what the point was. On Wednesday, Mr. Ketchum decided he had had enough of me and said I could start going to class again, like it was a big gift or something. He personally delivered me. I was hoping we would go during first period so I could go to home economics. I didn't hate the class as much as I had expected to, and I really liked Miss Carpo. Miss K. Miss K. I'm just gonna say Miss K. Since she was a little goofy and made funny mistakes. I think she liked me too, which was a nice change from, from most teachers, I want to tell you. As things worked out, I had to wait until second period, because first period, the man catcher was busy bawling out Orville Plummer. I thought this was pretty funny. Only I didn't laugh because if Orville I didn't laugh about it because if Orville had heard me, he would have plugged me good later. Ready for your grand return to society, Mr. Duggle? asked the man catcher when he was done with Orville. I nodded. The man catcher nodded back and gestured and gestured toward the door. I went out first. When we got to science class, the teacher Andromeda Jones was getting ready to do a demonstration of static electricity. Now class, I need a volunteer, she, she was saying as we walked in. I had no intention of volunteering. After all, Miss Jones was one of the few people, one of the new people, to come on staff since last year. Which meant that she was a prime candidate for being the alien. So, who knew what that machine was really for? Besides, I thought the way she dress was silly she wore a lot of that safari stuff you know you know what i mean khaki clothes with more pockets than an eighth grader has zits <laughs> i had her <laughs> i'm sorry that was a funny joke <laughs> I had heard a rumor that she claimed she dressed that way because she, teaching junior high was more dangerous than making a trek through the jungle, but I don't know if that was true or not. Anyways, after that, about 20 seconds went without anyone volunteering, the man catcher pushed me forward. Duncan will be glad to participate in your demonstration, Miss Jones, he said cheerfully. Not me, uh-uh, no way. The man catcher leaned down next to me and whispered, Duncan, you haven't begun to learn now, un- how unpleasant I can be, unless you want to spend the next five days in my office learning a new definition of misery. Get up there and participate in this experiment. I sighed and walked to the front of the room. People stared and started to giggle and snicker, which only made things worse. I started to blush. It's just as well as the man catcher was there. Otherwise, I probably would have bopped someone. Listen up, everyone, said Miss Jones. The purpose of this demonstration is to give you an, an idea of how free-flowing electricity can affect things. She motioned to a black kid sitting in the second row and said, Marcus, I want you to crank the generator. Marcus smiled. Sure thing, Miss Jones. I wasn't surprised that Marcus was smiling. One night last spring, my father had gotten drunk and done some things that were pretty mean. I was still in a bad mood when I came to school 
the next day, and when Marcus had some so said something to me that I didn't like, I knocked him down and jumped on his lunch pail. So, of course, he wasn't happy to crank the generator for Miss Jones. So he was happy. Only Marcus was in place. Oh, once Marcus was in place, Miss Jones put a huge helmet over my head. It was made of clear material, with a couple of jagged lightning bolts painted on the front. Lumpy knobs extended from the sides and the top. Once the helmet was in place, Mr. Jones told Marcus to start cranking. Also, guys, if you look at the picture on your screen, it'll probably show what the machine looks like. My scalp began to tingle. My hair started to move, as if a slight breeze were blowing through it. Within a few seconds, everyone, everybody was laughing like crazy. I suppose I did look pretty funny with my eyes wide and my hair standing straight up. Funny or not, I hate it when people laugh at me. I was so mad I wanted to bop someone. Only I couldn't because the manicure was right there. So I held what I was feeling inside. But I had had it. Forget trying to save the world. For all I cared, the aliens could come and take everyone away. Suddenly, I stopped thinking about people laughing at me. Something else was going on. Something weird. The inside of my head was starting to tingle. It felt like ants were walking around inside my skull. All right, Marcus, said Miss Jones. That's enough. Marcus gave the machine an extra crank or two for good measure. Marcus, snapped Miss Jones. I want you to stop now. Looking like someone had just stolen his candy, Marcus stopped cranking. I promised myself I would bop him as soon as I got the chance. The class was still laughing. My cheeks were burning as I headed for my seat. I sat down and tried to listen, but my head was still tingling from the demonstration. I don't think they should be allowed to do things like that to kids. After school, I had an idea. That was kind of... That was kind of neat, since it didn't happen all that often. I decided I would go to talk to Miss Schwartz over at the elementary school. Since the alien had put her in a force field last spring, she might believe me when I told her about what I found in the dumpster. On the way, I saw a bunch of kids from the 7th grade standing in front of Siegel's pharmacy. They were talking and muttering, but when they spotted me, they began to hoot and holler. Susan Simmons stepped out of the group and walked over to where I was standing. She poked her finger into my chest and said, I knew you were a creep, Duncan, but even I, but I, even ne but even I never thought you would sink this low. I've met earthworms that I... I respect more than I do you. I looked at her in shock. Now what had I done? That's the end of chapter 7. The next chapter is chapter 8. Should be coming out in a few minutes. So stay tuned. Hee <laughs> hee.